Hello and welcome to Barbatos Catholic Podcast, a show where two Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. We are your hosts, Gustavo and Walter. And today we're going to talk with Keith from Grassroot Catholic about who is going to serve the church. Um, Keith, great to have you. Welcome to the podcast. How's it going? Thank you. It's a pleasure being on your, your podcast, gentlemen. This is awesome. Thank you awesome. so much for joining. We- yeah. You, you you check the box. It has a beard. Okay, can be in the podcast as a guest. Okay. Um, so so we're, we're doing Catholic. Good that. Yes, Catholic. beard Catholic. check. Okay, yeah, got yeah. it. He's on. Yeah. Can he and does yeah. he want to? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Have a you know the bar is pretty low, really. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> so um, you you might uh, you might know Keith from. Um, from Instagram, uh, he has a a, 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 a very can, can we call it successful Instagram page at Insta, uh, at at Grassroot Catholic on Instagram. Uh, I guess people are drawn to it for whatever reason. I don't know. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, and it's I you know partially it is me. Obviously, I'm I'm the face, but it's you know more than that. Obviously, the you know God is probably has a. <laughs> Uh, hand in it hand in it maybe i see what you did there (laughs) okay so so far we know that that you're catholic and that you want to help people rediscover catholic tradition but can you tell us a little bit more about yourself like where are you originally from are you a cradle catholic or a convert Uh, what's your state in life what's your beer care routine all those fun things (laughs) now you're just getting too personal (laughs) nobody knows my well Share as comfortable uh, <laughs> as you feel, I guess yeah. I would say. Uh, well, we'll touch on that for sure. But yeah, I guess to, to kind of jump into it, my uh, I'm, I'm what you would call a geriatric millennial cradle Catholic. Okay, so basically born in the 90s. Uh, thankfully, you know, praise, praise to Jesus Christ, my parents built a, a wonderful foundation of faith for me because that's pretty much what it was throughout my entire 20s. Like, I... Uh, much like many people, when they go to college, they experience just just secular life and, and really mm-hmm. kind of push aside their faith, which, you know, what could have that been attributed to? I don't know, but I have a couple of ideas. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it has a lot to do with lack of tradition and reverence. Uh, I don't know, knowing, looking back, if I would have known all the stuff that I know today, would I have, would have, I have fallen away? I don't know. Probably not. But... Mm. Um, so with the Catholic school, I was formed by Catholic education. You can take that for whatever you want to take that. Um, no, it was okay. Um, from what I've seen, the educational, the, the institutions that I went to are really serious about theology now. Wasn't so about 20, 30 years ago, but, uh, it's, it's nice to see that. But anyways, uh, as far as like, uh, past the educational phase. I did get educated at Arizona State University. Uh, got a degree in theater with a concentration in acting, which, come to find out, is pointless. Uh, <laughs> I mean, pointless to a degree. I'm still paying off my student loan. Uh, but I got like mm-hmm. 10 payments left 15 years later. So that's pretty good. There you go. Nice. Uh, anyway, Thanks, so... Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting period of my life because then I moved to Chicago, studied okay. at Second City, uh, auditioned into the conservatory program. And it's really kind of interesting, too, because up until that point, all the classes at Second City, if you, if you don't know what Second City is, it's... Um, yeah, Tina Fey and, uh, uh, yeah. from The Office came out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of community. Great a lot community of community communists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Up until the, that point, all the classes with improv was like, break the rules. You don't need rules. This is improv. And then you get into the conservatory program and like, oh, oh, wait, you just broke that rule. You can't, you can't do that. Like, I quit. And so that was a lot of, that was my pride. Uh, I kind of regret that. But um, then I moved back home, lost. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I was literally brought back to my my church, the church here, uh, because of Gregorian chanting. I was like, "What is this? This is I've never heard this before." And so I got more interested, and it snowballed. And that's the gist. Quick, nice high level view overview of that. Nice. Wow, 
that's a wild ride that you took us to. It's, <laughs> we're we're it's just gonna yes time. and that for the rest of this interview. So, <laughs> so, so were you going reference. to mass? Were you going to mass in that kind of like limbo stage of college oh. and going to Chicago and stuff like that, or were you oh, completely yeah. disconnected? No, so I mean, and I think that's going back to my foundation. Like I knew I had to go to mass every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Was I serious? Was I praying daily? No, mm -hmm. I was just going with the flow. I was, you know, your typical cafeteria Catholic. Um, but it's funny, like I felt really homesick when I was living in Chicago. The only place that I felt good was going to mass. So that was kind of like the start of the snowball effect. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was that moment you're in Chicago, you're hearing Gregorian chant, you're like, I'm going to move back home. Well, no, so the, that was like, that was post coming back mm. home. It was just, I, I don't like winter in Chicago. And that was kind of, it was like a combination of things. Like I was just ready to come home. Uh, but yeah, after the fact, that's when I like a little bit more popular with Gregorian chanting at certain parishes and yeah. That's, that's what started it. That's so that, that that was like the, the, the trigger that brought you back. But then um, it, it if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, you started your Instagram page around uh, not even a year ago, in, in like mm -hmm. May of 2021. Yeah. Um, so what was the motivation behind uh, starting this project? So I... Because of the whole situation that's been going on for the last couple of years, a lot of mm -hmm. like gigs had like just stopped, like acting gigs. And so I was just, I needed some sort of creative outlet. And so I tinkered around with the thought of doing Instagram or having an Instagram account, but I didn't know what I would, I wanted to choose it with. And then I'm like, well, I have my faith. That's pretty good. But mm -hmm. I didn't know how to utilize that. Um, and so I just was thinking, huh, <laughs> complaining to my wife. Uh, I'm not, I'm trying so hard not to trash talk any, anybody, any parish or anything, <laughs> but like, it's just one of those things where I, I deeply just want a reverend mass. I just, I just want a mass to be taken seriously. That's it. That's all I ask for. Mm -hmm. And it's tough to get it where I'm at. So I complain. And my wife is like, you need to stop complaining to me because this is not helpful. It's not productive. You need to do something aside from complain. Like do, do what you need to do. Just stop complaining. Like, yeah, you're right. Of course you're right. Uh, so, I thought, well, I can't be the only person feeling this way. There's got to be other people. And so I was wanting, the, the whole gist of it in the beginning was to like, hey, you, me, we can we can get our, our parishes back to way, the way they should be with reverence, uh, tradition. And then it just kind of it mutated over the course of the, the year, um, more kind of helping people rediscover different traditions that may have gone uh pushed under the rug or maybe we just don't even know uh so mm -hmm. interesting so what was uh, kind of like the first uh so you you got this moment and, and thank god for your wife because i feel like our wives are kind of like the, that uh pushing force for for a, a, at least in my personal experience to like push us to be a, the man that we that we need to be um say so like okay do something about it and you have this creative outlet and like, okay, how do we start? That was kind of a similar idea to why we started Barbatos, which is as Mexicans, we were like, okay, there's a bunch of Mexicans that are cult culturally Catholic, mm -hmm. but are not really practicing the faith. Because uh, we were in, that. It, we, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So making that transition from being a cultural Catholic to being like a practicing Catholic and, and getting to know the richness of, uh, of tradition and, and the richness of the faith um that in and of itself is okay where do you start because it's so vast it's like trying to boil the ocean right <laughs> um so, so true. i i i like one one quote <clears throat> well there's two things that i that caught my eye from the the content that you share one of them is a quote from uh venerable fulton sheen uh the, he, i'm gonna just read it verbatim because i don't want to butcher it who is going to save the church it's not our bishops is not a priest, and it is not the religious. It is up to you, the people. You have the minds, the eyes, and the ears to save the church. Your mission is to see that priests act like priests. Your 
bishops act like bishops and the religious act like religious. And that seems to be like in a nutshell the 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 driving force of uh, what you are sharing with people. Am, am, am I right? Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great like Instagrammers content out there that do this. Um, but I, I didn't want to be like just another face that repeats the same stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like I, I do agree. We need to like shine a light on some, some really bad priests, but I, I wanted to do it in a way that was a little bit more positive, like a positive spin, like the things that mm -hmm. we can have control over and that we should have control over because we shouldn't just leave it up to the priest because obviously they, they have their hands tied a lot of the time and it's up to us yeah. to, to help, uh, to make, uh, our parishes the way they should be, which, you know, whether it be getting involved at a, a local parish level or, or, or having a relationship, you know, a, a personal relationship with uh, a priest, like, Hey, like, this is, I want to be your friend. I want to help out. Like, how can I m make the mass at least a bit more reverent uh, mm -hmm. or, or not? Like, maybe it's just <laughs> like an introverted person. They don't want to deal with anything. They can still have an effect on the, the mass. It's just, there's so many facets of what we can do to do aside from complaining. <laughs> That's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And yeah, because picking, that's not going to do any good. Yeah. Piggybacking Sorry, go from ahead, that, Justo. piggybacking from that, uh, Fulton Sheen quote, you know, yeah. where priests should act like priests, bishops should act like bishops and the laity should act like the laity. You know, we're not the priests. We're not, uh, we have our part to play in the celebration of the mass. And I think coming back to a comment that you said that it was about, sometimes it's just not knowing, you know, it's that ignorance that we, yeah. we just don't know how to act in mass because it was never taught to us or it was never, or we don't have a why, you know, why do, why do some people hold hands during the Our Father? You know, or why do little things, you know, that that um, the liturgy is a certain way for a reason. We need to know that reason so we can actively participate in it without deviating from it. And at the same time, really elevating ourselves. We're there to pray. You know, we're praying when we're at mass. We pray with our whole bodies. And it's it's a it's a moment that we share with the community, but it's not meant to be just like, okay, it should be really, really nice for you, but then it, it's going to be really awkward for some other people because I like to do it like this. Right. No, it was, it was um, designated to be a certain way for a reason. And I think it, it really comes back down to information and, and letting people know that information. And that's why I, I really enjoy your content because you don't do it in a pushy way or in a like, finger wagging way you know it's about <laughs> it's about making show uh, shining a light on it but in a positive and a, a, in a even in a funny way because you're very charismatic you know you're very very likable so it's hard to be like that guy you know but he's right <laughs> so. you should also thank my wife because a lot of like i she's kind of my filter because sometimes uh -huh. I, can, I can get a little dark uh or negative <laughs> and, like, you don't want to post that yeah <laughs> That's that's not. So she's that's your not, content editor, essentially. It really is. Uh, so <laughs> you know, I, I attribute a lot of the success to her uh, <laughs> having to, to to unfortunately be my filter. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so ours are too. You know, I mean, my wife definitely <laughs> has guided a lot a lot of my faith journey, and I'm so grateful to God for her. You know, and all all of her amazing knowledge. But but yeah, Sorry. that's it's it's really good to see. Um, the activity, you know, because I see people sharing the content and and it's resonating with people. But how do we make it to a point where it's not like we have enough shaming going on in the world? We don't need it in the, in the faith, you know, and we don't need it in our churches. So how can we just like advance, move, move the needle, you know, so we can all experience more, you know, of of, of the mass? Absolutely. We want to attract people to mm -hmm. the church, not like, yeah point out the the bad things which mm -hmm. it's easy to, it's it's easy to do and it's like it's almost i don't want to say it feels good when you're like ha ah, see all this bad stuff i told you so and it's like <laughs> no you don't want to do that like cuz like mm -hmm. obviously sometimes you have to shine a light on some bad things but there's more beautiful things about our church 
way more beautiful than this. Yeah. How do you how do you manage that though? Because I mean, like you, I don't want to get into specifics because there's a lot. But how do you manage that from uh how do you center yourself back when you when you get one of these interruptions, let's call them, whether it's somebody's phone ringing incessantly that they know they shouldn't have on and or people using a certain instrument that may be a little too loud, you know, because then that that gets me I in a different headspace. Specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll 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 tell you guys offline my experience over the weekend, but uh, right. but it's uh... yeah, you could you could make a whole week's worth of content with what I went through this this past weekend. But that's again, that's kind of like on me, you know. I should be there for one reason and one reason only: to hear the the word of God and to receive uh, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And everything else should just not be of importance to me. But obviously, I'm flawed. I give it that importance, and I get distracted, and I have kids, and you know. So, what what steps do you take to kind of like bring yourself back to what you're there for, essentially? That's that's the key. Yeah. How 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 does one get themselves focused during the holy mass when there's literally so many weird things that shouldn't be happening in mass. Uh, and I, I mean, it's a couple things. It's, it's like you said, it's, it's not about the end of it. It's not about us. It's about what's happening up there. And it, for me, I have to like, think, okay, when I hear an, a, a drum solo from an electronic drum set, I have to think, you know, there's some individuals probably in Afghanistan that would love to hear an electronic drum set during mass, which they can't go to, uh, or, you know, any others, other persecuted Christians out there, like, okay, I have it okay. This is annoyingly painful, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna maybe offer it up for those individuals, maybe offer it up for the souls in purgatory. You know, I, that's the only way that I can go about thinking, I'm like, okay, okay, this is good. I'm, I'm drawing back. And it actually, it makes me more aware of the stuff that's happening on the altar. Like, I have Correct. to be more focused. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it just gets lost in the fluff. So it's like I'm probably more attentive during a, you know, a mass that's maybe not my preference uh, mm -hmm. than you know a traditional Latin mass, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I think that okay, we can. I, I think it's safe to assume that most Catholics have a Novus Ordo mass available to them closer than, than a traditional Latin mass. So one of the things that I enjoy about the things that you're doing is that you're, you're trying to motivate people to up their reverence game in the Novus Ordo setting, which, um, I mean, Gustavo and I have seen very reverent Novus Ordo masses and also a lot of liturgical abuses in Novus Ordo masses. Sure. I mean, coming from Mexico, man, uh, like just I thought that that the music for the mass was like keyboards and guitars, mm -hmm. and then I got to the U.S. and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, but, but can you can you talk about uh, like several different things that you have suggested about how people can uh, up the reverence game at the Novus Ordo mass? Yeah. So it really, it's up to the individual, right? Like you can't easily go in and try to change the music. You're just not going to be able to do it. You can't change the person next to you that wants to have a conversation about the weather right as mass is starting. You can't really control that. I mean, you can ignore them, obviously, but, um, it, you know, for instance, examples would be getting to mass a little bit early to, to say some traditional prayers like the, the I think, coming to mind the prayer of St. Ambrose, St. Thomas Aquinas. There's these traditional prayers that I didn't even know about until probably a couple of years ago. And it's, it's crazy that I, like, how, how has this mm -hmm. gone? I've been, I'm 36 years old and I had no idea about any of these prayers. So there's, there's things that you can pick up like that. Prayers before communion, prayers before or after communion. Um, and then what, you know, I mentioned, or at least in one of my reels was bowing your head at the name of Jesus when it's mentioned by the priest mm -hmm. uh, or the deacon during, you know, either during the uh, the readings or during the actual like consecration. 
-hmm. little things like that. And they, not that you're doing this for other people, but you're also planting seeds. People will notice. It, they notice yeah. that you're kneeling during the consecration. They notice if you're going up and receiving Holy Communion on your knees and on the tongue. Like you can't, and that like that's the thing that I. It's a double edged sword because I don't want to be noticed at mass. I don't mm -hmm. want to draw attention to myself at mass. But in order to be reverent, that's unfortunately the the cost is having people see you and being like, "What is this guy doing?" Having yeah. eyes drawn. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not preferable, but it's not, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it because I want to give reference to. to mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how I, I, I find out things, you know, because you observe, I mean, there's a lot of people in mass and, and, and you inadvertently, whether you want to or not, you, you pick up certain things that, okay, these eight people are all like have prayer hands on the whole time at mass yeah. the deacon has that you know okay why and then come and explore it and i was like oh okay i get it that is that is a good custom to have maybe it keeps me more centered and everything that helps me be more focused yeah. i'm there i'm gonna i'm gonna try to apply it and 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 learn about it and yeah the one of, of bowing your head in the name of jesus um is something that i picked up recently because that that same way, because I saw that certain people and the deacon always does it. And I'm like, OK, OK. And then when I saw it on yours, I'm like, OK, I'm I'm getting it. You know, I'm, I'm little by little. But there's no other way other than going again to a full on catechism class and having these things like laid out, yeah. you know, and the why of it and, and how they help you and all, all of these things. So. I, I think it's it's super important and and we need more of it, you know, and we need more conversation and we need more uh, invitation to conversation to grow together and 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 really get get the most out of what we're there for, you know yeah. and give we, we're not there to get, but we're there to give, obviously to to yeah. offer right praise in the right way exactly 100%. and um. I think that hand in hand is just like tying it back to um, one of the other points that, that we mentioned at the beginning, towards the beginning, is the uh, being involved in parish life. I think that, um, you know, what we, how we live in, in between Sunday Mass, from Sunday Mass, it, it's as important as what we do during the celebration of mass on sunday so um that that part of being intentional disciples and befriending priests i think it's a it's an important thing because um i mean priests are people as well we need to have a relationship with them Sometimes. um in, in a, <laughs> a good one <laughs> no, just get all of them um the, but uh if you ask a pastor if 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 they need help, they are going to find something, yeah, that that you can do to yeah. help out in the parish life. Um, for example, there's there's little things that our our pastor does that uh, at the end of mass he's like introducing families, like we there's there's like people that we have seen over and over every Sunday, but we haven't you know, as Protestants say, cross the aisle to introduce ourselves, which it, it, I recognize that, that is something that is not my forte. Um, but our pastor is like, oh, so-and-so, have you met so-and-so? Mm -hmm. And that starts to 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 grow, like, the, the sense of community within the parish. Um, and now you, you have a, a, a bigger sense of community, and now you're eager to go and yeah. Maybe get to know this this other family, this other group of people a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, who knows? You might get roped in to volunteer with the youth group or the fish fry or what have you um, and start to be a part of, uh, of, of the parish life. Um, that's not a question. That's more like a comment. But <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think it's also important uh, as, as part of the... Uh, not just the reverence at mass, which is very important, but also uh, not just checking in on on Sundays and then not being present the rest of the week. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I, I th- um, you know, go looking, I don't know if you guys ever been to uh, like a Byzantine parish before, or like gone to a divine liturgy before, but they, we, we really should learn more or from our Eastern brothers and sisters because, and this may be just a parish uh, example, it may not be like this in all Byzantine parishes, but this particular one that we went to for a little bit, um, at the end of every divine liturgy, there would be in like in the little cafeteria, they would have like a full on buffet for everybody. So you just go in and you have lunch with everybody. And it's like, this, this is amazing. Like I can just eat literally lunch after divine liturgy. Like not that I needed extra motivation, but that's, this is kind of extra motivation to, uh, to go <laughs> here. So I think like people love to break bread with each other. I think somehow implementing food after mass and not just being like, a pancake breakfast, which is always, you know, a good thing, but like something that's going to draw people in. Um, I don't know. It's just, I thought that was interesting because you, what you mentioned there, but um, yeah, they, they have a lot of good ideas when it comes to community. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I mean, donuts after mass is always welcomed. Um, it's a good way to, to, to build community, but a, a full on buffet, so sign me up for that. I mean, <laughs> Some of the best food <laughs> So, can you send us that address after? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think there's a Byzantine Catholic church in Phoenix. Uh, St. Stephen's, I think. Right? Yes, I think. I can't remember. I, I, I uh, think I've, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah there's a couple. Um, and you you lived in Phoenix for for a while, right? I did. Yep. And uh, I think that uh, some of the the, the priests that we were talking about it you know I, I feel like a little bit spoiled in the diocese of phoenix because of uh you are our bishop don't take uh, it for granted and, like i did <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what that's one of the things that um i mean it, it's the only diocese that i've experienced in the u.s i've only lived here for 10 years and um it, it, we were when we started talking on instagram we, we started sharing stories about father len um which is uh, a rock star um, uh, in not like the rock star way that the world, because yeah. you, you know what I'm trying to say right now. Because yeah, you have Father Father Lankett and then also Father Klein, right? Mm-hmm. Two powerhouses, right? Yeah. Um, not fair. <laughs> so this is one of the things that you know that, that some people might like, uh, like me, like I would take that, those things for granted. That um, that um, it's not like that in other places in the United yeah. States or, or of the world. Yeah. So we need to also pray for the, for our priests and, 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 no. you know, yes. again, tying it back to Fulton Sheen, we need to uh, call out priests to be priests and religious to be religious and bishops to be bishops. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it, was, it, it is, um, again, don't take things for granted guys and gals. Um, <laughs> pray for your priests. It's easy to do it. It's so easy to, and that's what I did. Cause, uh, yeah, it's just, it's so easy. Like, Oh yeah, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And then you exactly. move somewhere and it's completely different and you're like, no, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have mm-hmm. taken that, taken that for granted. Oh, well. yeah. One, um, I think Gustavo, how are we doing on time? Are we good? We're good. Okay. Just wanted to tell so, Let's let's play a game, and right. and I think this might be yeah. a, um, a a fun one for the people that are listening. Um, just without naming the name of the parish or the diocese, you you name your worst experience at a mass, and I, and I can kick it off. I once went to a mass where the choir consisted of one person that was playing midi versions of hymns. And singing over uh, like a wab, uh, no, he was not even playing. Like it was a computer. Oh, it was recorded. It was recorded, but it was like you you know, like that thirty-two bit like sounding. Oh yeah, version of (laughs) something. Yeah, that was the choir. (laughs) I was like, is this for real? And it was. Mm -hmm. So that has been one of the ones that is like I I remember it so far that my wife and I we just call it the meaty mass. Um. (laughs) It was like okay, we know like that is one extreme 
of the ex spectrum, you know. Um, but yeah, all right. Whoever I'm wants to go next. my roll of decks here and give me a moment. <laughs> Gustavo, why don't you? Gustavo's go? going to talk about his right. his weekend. I, I I can go. Um, I once went to this mass where it was Christmas mass. I think I brought it up on the podcast before, but during Holy Communion, they sung "Mary Did You Know," <laughs> which she did. Um, Just a little, but. Obviously, not a not the best selection for not in my opinion after receiving Jesus. Um, but yeah, and then they had a version of like imagine like the catchiest song of the Beatles, right? No, it was that, but with like a Mexican song, which is Amor Eterno, Walter. It's a very, very known Mexican song, but they changed the words to Catholic words. The lyrics were Catholic, but if you hear Hey Jude, the, oh. right? You you're don't don't, don't matter what that's in your head, you're just going to sing yeah. the original song in your head. And that happened and I was like, "Ooh, okay. I think that's uh, the best examples that I can remember right now. Okay, so. that that these are awful examples, and I love them. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I guess I have two. Uh, one was <laughs> everything seemed to be okay. Now there, there's no like red flags until time for for Holy Communion, and the music up until this point was was okay. Like it wasn't it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad by any means, and and it sounded. Like some, they were trying to cover an Evanescence song, like full on electric guitar, <laughs> drums. And I'm like, am I going up to the mosh pit in this line? Is this where I sat? And like, I don't. It was so like, it didn't. It felt obviously it didn't fit. But um, and then the other one, it, this was an embarrassing part on my end. I don't necessarily know if it was a bad thing, but I was at a parish, not in my diocese, by the way. Um. Going up for communion, I was like, I think the last one, um, and I wanted to receive on my knees and on my tongue. And the deacon, I think he might have been surprised because I don't know if anybody else had done this. Uh, and I don't know how it fell off my. It, I don't know if it fell off my tongue, but it, like it fell on the ground, and I was like, in front of everybody, like, mm. oh great, now they're gonna be like, oh, th this is why we don't receive holy communion on your tongue or on your knees. And like, I didn't know what to do. So I grabbed it and I gave it back to the deacon. He kind of like, didn't know what to do with it. Is, and I'm just like, this is, a, oh no, this, this shouldn't be. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. That's brutal. Yeah. But, See, like coming from Mexico, like I didn't know that receiving on the hand was an option. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? It's, yeah, it's not a thing. It's, it's not, not a thing in Mexico. Mm -mm. Not really. No, I, I, that's the first thing I experienced it also when, when I came to live in the U S that we always received Holy communion on the tongue. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, I don't know where, what year or when it happened, but you know, it's a, like Justin Timber, like we're trying to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. 100%. laughs> I had to, I had to, I'm sorry. Uh, one of the one of the other uh, questions that I that I had prepared um, yeah. was uh, about uh, Latin. You you mentioned uh, Gregorian chant as one of the uh, the things that that brought you back. Um, so, what would you tell Catholics that they're they're fallen away Catholics or that are on the fence about like? Latin, they think that it is weird or or necessary. Um, what has been your experience with like the the Latin language in Gregorian chant, more specifically that that had made you uh, come to to be closer to your faith, if if that has been the case? Yeah, um, I I haven't been in that situation, so I'm not really sure how I'd even go about it. But I I can like say personally like. For me, it's it's a connection 
to my ancestors because my ancestors were from France and Germany and they spoke Latin at certain points. I'm liturgically, um, you know, going to mass. So it, it, for me, it's like builds that connection when I pray in Latin that my great, great, great grandfather prayed the same, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So having that connection is helpful, but obviously maybe not too many people have that type of connection, but it's, it's almost, it's like a, when you, it's, you, you guys probably understand this, like when you hear or listen mm -hmm. to Gregorian chanting in Latin, it's almost, it's unworldly. It doesn't seem like it's from this world. Like it's, mm -hmm. I don't want to call it supernatural, but it doesn't, it's so foreign, more foreign than like any other type of language. And it's, it's beautiful. And there's so much beauty in it, even if it's just spoken. Um, mm -hmm. So it, you, I mean, you don't need to pray in Latin. That's like, you know, you have a lot of mad trads who are like, pray Latin, you need to pray in Latin, not in English or anything. It's like, well, you can, you don't have to. It Does it enhance mm -hmm. your prayer life? Maybe, but it's really a great, I mean, all Catholics, maybe not Eastern Catholics because they're not, you know, that's not kind of the, the universal language of their church, but uh, within the right. Western church, we should know some Latin, like mm -hmm. that's our history. So, yep. Yeah, at least as a... Uh, um... I mean the Latin rite. Um, there is like a connection. I, I was uh, reading a little bit about like how it is a sacred language. It is a uh, a mystical language, and it is tied to the instrument of salvation. It's, it, on the mm -hmm. cross, um, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, was uh, written in in Latin, Greek, and in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So those three languages have some significance as to how um, we experience uh, our salvation and uh, the liturgy, how the first Christians would have, uh, the language that our first century Christians would have would have talked. And that, like you mentioned, that tapping into um, tradition can be um, something that, uh, it, it feels like that a continuation um even though for some people can be very foreign. I, I think that as a native speaker of Spanish, it's a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you listen to this, it's like, oh, this is closer to this other world because, you know, Spanish came out of uh, Latin, just like French and Portuguese and Italian are derived from, mm -hmm. from that. Um, so, um, yeah, like you said, you don't have to pray in Latin in but it also doesn't hurt if you do right. uh and if you you know i think that one of the first uh things that i learned in latin was to how to sing the uh salve regina because i heard a group of monks chanting it and i was like well that's pretty i want to know how to sing that <laughs> um i love mary i'm just gonna learn that for her and sing it to her um But you know, I'm a mama's boy, so that's that's a different story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we started doing the um, the rosary in Latin a little while ago. We didn't we didn't keep it up. We actually were talking about yeah. this past week that we want to pick it back up. So I have we have two girls, uh, a little older, uh, 10, yeah. 10 and thirteen. Just turned thirteen, so pray for us. Um, <laughs> but we. We, as a family, we pray the rosary and, and we wanted to make sure that our kids know their prayers in English and in Spanish. So if we go to Mexico and we go to mass or we're on vacation at the beach and we go to mass, it's, they understand that they can follow it and they can, they can go. Um, so we started practicing the Spanish prayers a lot more because Inadvertently, you live in the U.S. and you're just going to speak the language. So I'm guilty of it. I don't speak as much Spanish as I should at home uh, because of my work or whatever. But um, I'm I'm kind of like the the culprit. My wife speaks a lot more Spanish than I do to them. So teaching them the rosary and praying the rosary in Spanish, it was another way of really um, uh, having them be more prepared. And then when when we said, okay, now they know it in Spanish, what's learning in Latin? So we started praying it, praying it in Latin, and it was great. You know, it is a good a good practice to have, and um, mm -hmm. it's it it helps you in another sense because again, if you we go when we go to Rome, 
And I was like, and we are at mass, they are going to be able to pick up at least 40 to 30% more than they would have otherwise. So, so that's a, it's a cool exercise to have when, when you're praying with the kids and it makes it a lot more interactive, you know, because each one of them gets a mystery. So, so that's kind of like something we've been trying out. We got to pick it back up though. We kind of like lingered a little bit. That's awesome. That's a great tradition. I, I'm, yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm looking forward to when my, my daughter's going to be able to actually start. Well, she picks up prayers every once in a while, but it's, uh, you know, when she's able to actually pray and, and Latin, that'll be cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And we stumble together, you know, none of us are doing it right. And we just stumble together. And it's another beautiful thing that we do as a family. Yeah, and I... Hey, man, the family that learns together stays together. Or so yeah, that's yeah. Right. prays like together. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Gustavo, do you have any uh, closing uh, comments, last call? Yeah, I was just going to ask you, uh, what's, what's, um, what's next, you know, for your um, grassroots Catholic platform? Where are you thinking of taking it? What's the response that you're getting from people and, and, and how else are you going to uh, enlighten us? <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's, it's challenging, challenging enough to, because I try to do a post a day and that's very difficult to do with a full-time job and also having, you know, being married and have a child that, that I'm sure you guys know it's difficult to manage mm -hmm. something like this uh, on a consistent basis. So I'm, I'm sticking with Instagram until... I feel like it's necessary to branch out to other types of social media. But as far as um, what's on kind of the horizon, um, working on just like a short form interview series of how to bring reverence back. Nice. So, um, I mean, I, it's pretty straightforward. Just trying to figure out how we can, as just a normal Joe Schmo, how we can, and just, we even talked about it a little bit here. Like how can a normal person bring reverence into, uh, the mass to a parish? Um, cause it's not really talked about that often. It's, you know, talked about how irreverent mm -hmm. masses and priests can be, but it's never talked about like, what can the individual do to help out? So yeah. that's what that's on the horizon. Um, that's awesome. March 31st is going to be the first, uh, it's going to be Instagram live, um, doing a, a quick in interview with Jordan from do the harder thing, um, about, about just that. So they'll, the mm -hmm. first of many, nice. and there's going to be other individuals too, that are, that are going to be popping on, but, um, so yeah, that's, what's kind of coming down the pipeline. Awesome. Another excellent Beautiful. beard, Catholic beard yeah. of Instagram. He's, you know, <laughs> we, we are us bearded folk have to stay together, right? And to stick together. <laughs> we had to look yeah. out after each people other. People were really upset. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it. I, I, so I posted a reel that I made a while ago. I just reposted it. Um, and it was when I shaved my beard. And people were so upset that I'd shaved my beard. thought they I, I like, no, oh, I didn't wow. shave my That was from a while ago. Like, And then I realized I'm stuck with this beard now because people are going to get upset that I shaved my beard. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you uh, lost followers yeah, that day, right? You're like I'm out. I'm out. And just, I'm out. <laughs> what happened? What did I do? <laughs> well, it was so offensive that I said, "No, wait, I shaved." Oh, that was it. Uh, My goodness, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, let's let's plug all the things. Uh, where can people find you other than at grassroots? Grassroot Catholic, my goodness, I cannot say it. Grassroot Catholic Man, on Instagram. Just kidding. Uh, no, um, it just so rolls yeah, aside off from Instagram, I, I do have a YouTube page. I don't know if you guys remember back, this was last March, I think. Well, no, it's like June, May or June, when Instagram just went completely kaput. I was like, well, I can't, I don't want to mm -hmm. put all my eggs in one basket. So I just now kind of upload a lot of my reels into YouTube. So I have a YouTube page, um, same same name, um, but less updated because I'm focusing on on Instagram. So, why don't you go ahead and say that page so people actually get it? Because <laughs> grassroots Catholic, say it with me, grassroots Catholic. 
Just is this right? There's grass root. Only one root. Grass root. <laughs> one root. Well, now I just <laughs> confuse the heck out of people. Yeah, ves, se también lo estás diciendo mal. Grass roots. I can't even find him on the. Let's say, let's have the guy that has the channel say it. Uh, so much go. pressure now. Keith, go. Mispronounce my own channel. Uh, <laughs> is it the grassroot Catholic? No, I think it's just grassroot Catholic. I think it's just grass. Grassroot Catholic. There you go. <laughs> you heard it from coming from the horse's mouth, people. <laughs> we're, we're we're just gonna tag him, guys. We're just gonna tag yeah, him. That works. And, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's beautiful well, what you're doing, Keith, likewise. and keep it up, really. And and um, yeah, definitely have have like a couple of good um, followers here because it's it's all about growing together, and that's exactly the 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 purpose of of our little endeavor here, right? To to grow together, to become the men and women that God uh, called us to be, and and just putting our little grain of sand, you know, into the beach here in. Um, and hopefully it, it 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 gives some fruit down down the line, and I'm sure yours has. But it's it's super important, and we really thank yeah. you for and, and your likewise, ministry. Like you guys do a great job with your interviews with really great people. Like, and I'm not just saying it's me. Like, uh, yeah. for myself, okay. Yeah, you know, no. You have some great inter- <laughs> people that you've interviewed, and and really, uh, you know, I, I love what you guys are doing too. Okay. Awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. We're bringing reverence back. Uh, there you go. <laughs> um, so, in the meanwhile, uh, while you're going to check out Grassroot Catholic on Instagram, we want to thank you for listening to this episode of Barbados Catholic Podcast, the show where two Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. If you like the podcast, you got something out of this episode, please share it with your friends and family. Subscribe, like, comment, rate, and review if you haven't. If you don't like the podcast, well, just keep it to yourself and let others make their own mistakes and um, if you go to direct.me forward slash barbatos uh, you can check out the show notes social media and how to support the podcast if the spirit moves you and much more and bless Salanis casey pray for us pray for us until the next time